Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this drawing series, Drawing with Joe. Uh, we're working on our short-haired girl right now. This is, uh, this is the part where I start adding in my values. So usually what I do, and I mentioned this in the last video, usually what I do is I make a layer, <clears throat> make a layer underneath my sketch or line art layer, and I just fill it in with gray. Uh, usually this is a lighter gray than the sketch art, or the sketch art, the line art layer. So like, you know, the color I use to uh, sketch. Um, this technique is easier because uh, if you tend to mask your colors or if you tend to mask your whole figure so that colors won't go outside the coloring area, you'll have a much better time and you'll spend less time erasing, more time filling in and getting in your values. Um, I don't really use the mask that much because I, I don't give a fuck, but... Um, okay, well... Okay, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the video as we speak, so... I forgot to edit some parts that are kind of slow, but... Whatever. So after you're done filling in your figure, what you want to do is you want to start putting in your values. Now what I do, I usually start with uh, darker values. I don't like going in with highlights too soon because uh, sometimes I tend to make my skin too light and so my figures come out looking really pale and really, I don't know, the skin color is just kind of gross. So what I like to do is I like to start with darker colors first. Right now you can see I'm putting in a darker value around the cheeks, the cheek area. Um, there's a certain rule that I like to apply to all my paintings. Uh, I, I recommend looking at references, like, you know, from real life. The cheek and nose area tends to be red, like reddish in color. Uh, the forehead seems to be a little yellow in color, and then the chin area is kind of gray. You know, not, not too much color. So the cheeks are where the, um, where the skin tone is warm, the most warm. Um, I do also recommend studying planes of the face. Planes of the face are just usually like where shadows and highlights belong. Yeah, I see a lot of paintings nowadays um, with people just starting out with digital painting where there are planes that don't exist or don't belong. So a lot of people make their cheeks too bright or too flat. So it just looks like a cartoon. Um... A lot of people make their noses too flat, so it just looks like there's two nose holes out of nowhere. There's no depth at all. Like you see right here, I'm putting in darker value so I can make my nose pop out more when I add highlights later. You'll see. Um, yeah, you really have to study your values because values make the painting. Values make everything. They determine, you know, how how far or how light uh a figure is like um like here the figure there is no real background it's just uh it's a solid color for now so i'm trying to make sure that everything is visible everything is in the painting that should be in the painting uh she's not far away she's not too close so uh i'm not too worried about uh, shit like, I don't know, making her lighter because she's in the background or darker because she's uh, really close and needs to be focused more. No, I don't really worry about that. I always put my portrait paintings especially like in mid-ground, you know, so enough so you can see the whole picture kind of. So you can see the whole face, the shoulders and whatnot. Um, this does take a bit of practice for values. Like it took me a hell of a long time actually i i couldn't get the values right like if you guys see my ugh, my high school shit oh my god disgusting the skin it's nasty i i didn't know how to use like different colors or i knew how to use different colors but i was too afraid to use different colors on skin don't be afraid to experiment uh with skin like cooler tones on certain areas of the face do does wonders you you never know you never know what you're gonna get okay so here i'm just 
working on my lips, working on the cheek area, the eyelid area. Uh, usually there's like a, there's a bone that protrudes um, towards the outside of the eye lids. That's why there's a highlight there. And then the, the skull also tends to dip a bit. Like if you look at the forehead, the skull tends to dip a bit on the outside edge. That's why I added a shadow there. There's like a slight shadow. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the cheeks. On the outside, the cheeks tend to dip, especially if you have high cheekbones. Um, so you don't want to add too much shadow around the under eye area because then your face is going to look flat gonna look very 2d and we don't want that we want some sort of depth to add something interesting to our character like when people look at your portraits they're gonna think oh wow look at that that's that's nice nice touch of realism they got their planes right they got the values right that's nice very good well very very good wow very very good <laughs> very good sorry i can't speak today fucking i it's it's nine o'clock I'm I'm tired. I haven't done this before. I'm tired of shit. All I want to do is play Assassin's Creed or whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted. I was looking at the clock and I just zoned out. Um. Anyway, here we go with a shadow. You could start with highlights. You could. I just find it easier. Like for me, I find it easier starting with shadow because then you get to get a better sense of where light is bouncing off. So you, when you put in shadow, uh, you immediately see where light is forming and where light bounces around. I don't like starting with highlights because I get confused. I, I just, I don't know where the fuck my shadows are. And so I have to deal with that later and that's going to take way longer than I wanted to take. Wow, we're already halfway through the video. Uh, if we, if you have it subscribed already, to my channel. What the fuck am I doing? Oh, sorry. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I recommend you do because I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. Um, if you want to know what I do when I'm not doing videos, you can follow me on my Instagram and shit. I got a Facebook art page too. If you got Facebook, enough with the advertising. Let's keep let's keep going. <laughs> um, right here, uh, I notice. On certain references that I've pulled out from like Google or Pinterest, I noticed that there's some shadowing that starts from the top of the cheeks, and then if you make your way down, there's a little, just a little dip where the lip muscles uh, protrude just a little bit. You see that? And then that's where you begin to highlight the cheek. I mean, not the cheek, the uh, the chin. So the chin is slightly lighter than the cheek area. That's how it protrudes. Like that's how you can make it protrude like that because you know chins aren't flat. They're they're kind of like roundish in shape. It's a slight dome area, and you want to get you want to get that right because then your face is just gonna look flat or your chin's gonna just disappear into your neck, and that's not good. <sighs> oh man, I'm already tired of talking. Oh, my God, how does Mark Crilly do that? How does Mark Crilly do this? I can't fucking do it. Props to whoever can do this for... He can do it for, like, hours, right? Like, an hour or so? Shit. Can't do that. But this is for you guys, so I'm trying. Oh, what I like to do... This is my favorite part. What I like to do is I like to add a slight highlight in the corner of the eye. Like, in the inside corner of the eye, right there. So I can highlight that part just right there, yeah. So I can kind of uh, add some dimension to the cheek. It blends into the cheek really nice. What I don't recommend doing is going full white or full black when it comes to values. You want to subtly build up your values. When I say subtly, I mean, you know, softly, gradually. So if um, I see a lot of people go to absolute black when they try to do their shadows. Um... In certain circumstances, that might work. Like if you're doing a, a very dramatic type of painting, then that's fine. But when you're doing something from life or when you're trying to achieve realistic skin tones, you might want to stay away from absolute black and absolute white. Um, because 
your skin tones might just end up looking like crap, like literally crap. You know, uh, shadows aren't absolutely black unless you're in a dark ass room with no light whatsoever. Uh, shadows tend to be like a really dark gray or just a slight gray, you're like if you're in the sun. And even then, skin, the skin tone bounces off and mixes in with um, the light, which mixes into the shadow. So shadows can turn red according to your skin tone or kind of orange, kind of blue, whatever. It depends on your environment. Okay, so here we're starting with the hair. Um, I did a, a dark color for the hair because I wanted her to be like a kind of like a brunette. Uh, if you don't want uh, dark hair, then you should keep the hair light. And I'll tell you guys why. Um, probably not in this video, but in the next video, like when I start coloring and shit. Uh, which is, it's a segue. This is a segue of how you're going to determine your colors. So pretty much the rule is if you want lighter colors later on when you start coloring, then keep the value light. And if you want darker colors, keep the value dark. That's easy. Uh, I wanted her to be a brunette, so I kept the hair dark. So then when I go into color later, um, she can have like nice brown or reddish brown hair. So, what am I doing now? Okay, I'm just going in and fixing some stuff. Don't be afraid to fix whatever you want. Like I said in the last video, it just fix anything you need because later on... It's going to be difficult to, uh, like, m place things around. Like, oh, if your eyes are too high up or your nose is too big or your lips are too small, you, you need to fix it now. This is the time to fix it before we start blending in everything and uh, painting everything essentially all on one layer. So, and we are still on the grayscale layer so this is all underneath the sketch layer usually what i do later is i combine everything that means like the line art or sketch and the grayscale value painting i combine all of that and then i paint all on one layer you could also um paint over everything so you can make another layer above the sketch or line art layer and just paint over that but i uh, i like painting everything on one layer because everything blends more easily um if you try to blend everything like on a top layer then the color is not gonna really i don't know photoshop does this thing where it doesn't blend color as well if it's not all on one layer i don't know if it's just me uh that's what i found out okay so here i'm putting in a little more light so i can see what the hell i'm doing yeah yeah there we go um we're nearing the end of this video, or this part. Uh, I think in the next video, I'm going to start blending in everything so I can get my values right. Uh, I, I don't think there will be more than four parts to this series. Let me, guys, let me know if you guys like what I'm doing right here. Because uh, I, all I want to do is help my fellow artists... You know, because everybody has dreams, everybody has aspirations, and if I can help you reach them, then that's fine with me. That's great. So if you guys think that this uh, video series is helping a lot, please let me know because I I do um I do these videos to help you guys. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for fame and shit like that. I just want to help, and and it's fun to do. Not the talking thing. I fucking I can't. Oh my god, I'm already tired. My throat's tired. Uh, help help okay it's fine it's fine but l let me know i'm sure that i helped somebody out there i hope i did okay so uh we're almost done we're almost done i'm just adding some finishing touches don't go into too much detail before you start you know blending in everything because you you will go into detail at the end that's your time to add whatever that um whatever else you think is necessary because this is just the value part we're not even in the painting part yet uh, this video is about 15 minutes but the real time was around 40 minutes I think so combined with the last video I'm almost at like I'm almost at two hours right 40 plus 40 yeah 
So I was almost at two hours at this stage. Usually this takes about like, I don't know, four hours for a portrait. That's if I really work hard on it. It usually takes me 2.5 if I'm just studying. But uh, anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, wait for part three and then we'll get started on blending everything together. Thank you and goodbye.